Morning folks and welcome back. This is the first video in a series I'm doing on the Norfolk coastal footpath uh, which is a continuation of the Pedder's Way that I did last year. I've just left the seaside town of Hunstanton and I'm now heading along towards uh, Old Hunstanton or Hunston as it's uh, locally known um, before we swing east and uh, follow the coast along. Now there are lots of facilities in Hunstanton, it's, it's quite a large busy seaside town um, so you can stock up on everything you need for the, for the walk and there are two routes that you can take. Uh, today I came along the cliff top, um, but you can walk along the beach at low tide. Unfortunately I mistimed it and the tide is in so I, there, was no, there was no real access along the beach. Um, which is a shame because there are some beautiful cliffs there. It's a site of special scientific interest and the cliffs have beautiful striping, um, chalk at the top and red limestone underneath. And uh, they're quite unique. Uh, lots of fossils, so I was quite gutted to have uh, missed out on walking along the beach. If you do choose to take the, the beach route, um, look out for the shipwreck of the steam trawler Sheraton. Um, the hulk of it, the steel hull, um, is still visible on the beach. It was built in the uh, early 1900s and requisitioned during both world wars by the Royal Navy um, and put into service. And then after the Second World War, it was uh, used as target practice and uh, it was moored up out in the wash. However, it broke free from its moorings in 1947 and ran aground um, and uh, it's, well, it's still there now. <laughs> So we're just heading towards home here, uh, which is where I left off when I walked the Pedder's Way. That's where the Pedder's Way ends. But it's also the site where Sea Henge was found. Sea Henge is a, an early Bronze Age monument um, consisting of a ring of uh, split oak uh, logs um, sunk vertically into the sand um, with a central upturned um, oak root stump. Against lots of protest, um, it was removed to preserve it. And uh, you can see parts of it in the Kings Lynn Museum. For thousands of years it had been buried under the sand and protected, but um, once it was exposed, you know, I guess it starts to deteriorate fairly quickly. Yeah, so if you go looking for it, you won't, you won't find anything, you won't find any oak posts, but uh, this is roughly, roughly where it was. I'm not sure exactly where. So I'm now walking through Home Dunes uh, Nature Reserve, uh, which is just stunning. Rolling dunes, uh, little lagoons and salt marsh, absolutely stunning. Um, but the other really nice thing is there's a good surface to walk on, um, all the way from, well, pretty much since I left um, the beach at, uh, at home, where I, when I finished the Pedder's Way, um, there's a good, solid, compacted walkway, and now we're, we're heading onto Boardwalk, so uh, much easier underfoot. As you'd expect along any coastline, we've got a few relics from the war here, old bunkers or something.
系啊So behind me we've got the bird sanctuary at Titchwell um, and at this point the, the path deviates inland. You can't really get across, um, you know, it's marshland, it's uh, ever-shifting sandbars and um, you know to try, to try and make it across without knowing where you're going and what you're doing could um, end up, you could end up getting stranded out there. So uh, the path deviates inland, it's probably one of the least interesting little bits just because you're away from the coast for a bit but uh, yeah, that behind me is Titchwell. So this is Thornham, a welcome stop for refreshments after the, after the walk through the nature reserve. And um, this is the point where uh, the path diverts inland and there's a loop which uh, then spits us back out near Brancaster. Um, I'm not going to stop here, I'm going to press on for a, for a short while and find a place to, to cook some lunch. Um, I've brought some stuff with me, so um, that's what I shall do. I had to stop. I'm really hungry and, um, you know, need some fuel. Uh, I set off about quarter past ten this morning. Um, that was the soonest I could set off uh, due to the buses. I, um, I drove up and left my, left my car at Burnham Deepdale Backpackers. Um, there's a campsite and a, a sort of hostel there and, um, and they allow you to park there for, for a small fee per day. So that's what I've done just so that the, the car is um, off the road and secure. And, uh, and then there's a really good bus service, which runs all the way along the coast. Um, stops in just about every village, so uh, you know access to various points along the way is, is really good. Um, and they run uh, seven days a week as well. There's a, there's a limited service on Sunday, but they do run sort of every two hours, I think it is, or something like that. So uh, yeah, that's what I did. I parked there and I got the bus to Hunstanton and then set off from there. So by the time I, I, I got there, you know, off the bus, it was it was sort of pushing pushing on for sort of yeah quarter past half past ten um, I've made reasonably good progress um, 
you know, obviously <laughs> filming, uh, you know, it takes it takes longer than just walking it. Um, the guidebook that I've been using um, recommends uh, sort of five and a half hours to do this leg from uh, Hunstanton to Burnham Deepdale. About five and a half hours at a comfortable walking rate. So meal-wise, um, I'm carrying all my food with me um, and I've just uh, vacuum packed them into bags for each meal. So this is a lunch and um, in here I've got some instant noodles and uh, mackerel fillets, fishy noodles, every backpacker staple um, and uh, I've got a Snickers and some raisins to have for dessert. That was disgusting. The inland loop is is a slog. <coughs> You've got that long that long walk on tarmac up out of the village of Titchwell, uh, not Titchwell, Thornham, sorry. And then it's a long route around on on paths. The paths are good, you know, they go around fields and stuff, but it is a long route. Oops. And finally, you'll emerge in Brancaster. Um, if you're feeling weary at this point, the ship in uh, does accommodation, has accommodation, um, and uh, obviously they do food and refreshments as well. And it's also one of the villages served by the Coast Hopper bus. So if you need to catch a bus to get back to where you started or to go on to wherever you're staying, you can catch one from here. So I'm just walking along the back of the village of Brancaster at the moment, um, between sort of the village, the ends of the gardens, if you like, of the houses of the village, and um, the salt marshes, which you can see over there on the left. And um, Brancaster is a really old settlement, dates back to Roman times, probably older. Um, and uh, at the time, the sea was a lot further inland. Um, so, you know, the backs of these walls and things that you can see here, these aren't Roman, but they're there was a Roman fort here and the sea came right up to the Roman fort. And here in fact is the site of the Roman fort. Not much to see now, just a, a bit of a hump in the ground. <laughs> So this is Brancaster Stave, a little bit further along the coast from Brancaster. And uh, in the distance, 
beyond those boats that are high up on the mud at the moment, uh, you can see Stolt, Stolt Head Island. Um, and that's a, a barrier island. You can't get to it except by boat. And there are ferries that go out there, but it's, it's basically it's a, it's a haven for wildlife and, and a nature reserve. Something else I didn't mention about Brancaster, um, if you do get a chance to go on to Brancaster Beach, there's a, another shipwreck there, quite a famous one, the SS Vena, which was also requisitioned during the war um, and used as target practice. <laughs> and uh, just like the Sheraton, it um, also broke its tether um, during a gale in 1944 and that one ran aground. And that's, that's still there, big chunks of it still there on the beach. getting on for about five o'clock and uh, most of the people out walking have gone home or gone to the pub or something but they're not out here which is good so I'm going to carry on walking until sort of last light I think and uh, then look for a place to set up camp Well, I officially have the place to myself. I'm gonna look for a place to set up, because I am pooped. Oh, well, I found a spot. It's, uh, oh, it's definitely not ideal. <laughs> but um, I haven't got a lot of options, really. I could carry on, but to be honest, I'm absolutely knackered and I've probably got, well, the sun has actually set. We've just got sort of, you know, residual light. So um, I'd be arriving somewhere in the dark and I don't know whether there's anything better. <laughs> it's quite a long walk along this kind of raised bank before I get to the next, you know, where it, where it comes back in and joins, joins the coast as it was before. So I think this is just gonna have to do. It's just a place to put my head down after all.
Well, that's me set up. I did bring a tarp with me. I was going to put a tarp up as well, but um, to be honest, I don't think I need it. There's not forecast for any rain tonight. And um, if it does start to rain, I'll just grab the tarp out and wrap it, wrap my bag up in it and just leave my bag next to, next to my bivvy bag. And that should be all right. I can put my boots in the bivvy with me so they don't get, da so they don't get damp. I've bought a, a dehydrated meal with me. Not, not one of my own, um, but, uh, but uh, I bought one. Um, I wanted to give them a try um, thinking ahead to sort of Sweden really. I, I was going to take a couple of dehydrated meals with me just, um, just, as, emer just as emergency meals. Um, and just, um, yeah, wanted to, wanted to see how they are really. I've not had this particular brand before, so um, I'm going to try one of them. But first, I'm going to have a well-earned beer. I um, stopped at Burnham Deepdale just back there, about a couple of miles back down the, down the coast to get water. And um, there's, a, there's a supermarket, well, a garage come supermarket there, and they sell all sorts, so I bought a couple of beers. I thought I'd earn them today. But um, yeah, it's really good. There's, lot, there's lots there at Burnham. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're doing the walk, it's a good, it's a sensible place to stop. You know, it's, it's kind of 12 miles from Hunstanton to Burnham Deepdale. Um, so it's a, good, it's a good walk. There's a campsite there, um, really friendly staff, really helpful. Uh, there's a bunkhouse there as well if, you, if you're not up for camping and you want a, a proper bed. But obviously, you know, there's, there's washing facilities and showers and, um, you know, a place where you can get, get a, a beer and there's a few little shops there as well. But yeah, there's quite a lot there. So it's, it's definitely a good place to stop. Mm. So what I'm having is uh, one of these expedition quality adventure foods. It's just a dehydrated meal. You add water straight into the bag and eat it out of the bag so it saves on a bit of washing up. Um, I've never had one of these before. I used to always get the travel lunch dehydrated meals but they don't seem to be doing them anymore. Or if they do, that not in the, not in the stores that I go in. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I thought I'd give it, give it a whirl. Chicken curry. I decided to go for um, methylated spirits and a Trangia burner on this trip. Um, you know, I knew I was going to be walking along the coast and woodland was going to be sparse. Um, I have passed a couple of woodlands, been through a couple of woodlands, but you know, I would have had to have picked up wood then and carried it with me and I just didn't want to have to do with that. You know, a small container of methylated spirits like this, that'll last me the, the two days and um, it's quick and easy. So uh, that's what I did. Right, that has got to be ready. Oh, that looks pretty good actually. Mostly rice by the looks of it. And there's some little chicken pieces. Little tiny chicken pieces. There's one on there, look. There's some green stuff and some red stuff. got some PCF hot sauce here. Uh, this one is Old World number seven. I have no idea whether that's hot or mild, but um, I'm gonna dump it in and see how it goes. The whole lot's gone in. Yeah, it's given it a nice little warmth. It's not too hot. Mm. Yep, 
yeah that was that was all right it was a bit bland if i'm if i'm honest um but um you know it would do as a <laughs> you know an emergency an emergency food i certainly wouldn't want to live on them <laughs> for um you know a trip although they're convenient but um yeah i like a little bit more flavor the um the hot sauce definitely helped Well, I'm going to have this last beer and um, I'm going to crawl inside my bunker <laughs> because it's actually got really cold. It's a clear night, <clears throat> there's not a cloud in the sky and the temperature, as soon as that sun went down, the temperature just plummeted and um, I'm sitting on top of that ridge at the moment where the footpath um, ran and um, just because it's a flat spot for cooking and, uh, and the winds, it's not windy but there's a breeze and that breeze is cold so um i'm going to enjoy this last beer and then i'm probably gonna crawl into my bivy bag and, um, and snuggle up and get get comfy or as comfy as i can sleeping at the bottom of that slope <laughs> i should have just stayed in the campsite shouldn't i oh well Good night, folks. Yeah.